Hello and welcome to Ogden by Sea Church's Reading the Bible Together. My name is Dom, I'm the pastor of the church, and it's great that you can join me as we continue reading the Psalms. Well, Psalms 1 to 72, that's book one, during the month of December. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. We remember at this season how you have reached out to us. You haven't left us in the dark, but you have sent your Son, the light of the world, into this world. And part of this glorious reality is that you would make yourself known. And we pray that that same reality would be the case now as we humble ourselves before you, as we read your word, that you would speak to us, that you'd be with us, that you'd make Jesus known to us. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalm 11. In the Lord, sorry, for the director of music of David. In the Lord I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on earth. His eyes examine them. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. On the wicked he will rain fiery coals and burning sulphur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. So David writes this. And similar to many other occasions in the Psalms, he is taking refuge in the Lord. He recognises that he alone is his security and his confidence, his protection, his shield and all that. It's the Lord. And it looks like it's another occasion when he was in trouble. People are out to get him so often as you read through the story of David but he remembers this. He remembers that despite everything chaotic going on, that the Lord is still in his holy temple. He has not been dethroned, but he reigns forever. And he watches over everything that's going on. And he doesn't just see it, but he will hold everyone to account. And that gives him hope. He knows that he can endure the violence against him because he knows that the Lord has been gracious to him and will rescue him ultimately and will hold everyone to account. The Lord is righteous. He loves justice. Ah, right. Psalm 12 is off the screen. Let's try and fix that. Excuse me. Is that any better? It's still off the screen. Technical difficulties. There we go. I should have checked that before. Hopefully that's all on. OK, <laughs> sorry about that. Psalm 12 for the director of music, according to Shimonith, a psalm of David. Help, Lord, for no one is faithful anymore. Those who are loyal have vanished from the human race. Everyone lies to their neighbour. They flatter with their lips, but harbour deception in their hearts. May the Lord silence all flattering lips and every boastful tongue. Those who say, by our tongues will prevail, our own lips will defend us. Who is Lord over us? Because the poor are plundered and the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will protect them from those who malign them. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. You, Lord, will keep the needy safe and will protect us forever from the wicked who freely strut about when what is vile is honoured by the human race. I guess this sums up the problem with humanism and this hope in humanity. David, by the Spirit, could see better than most and he could see what was in his own heart and in the hearts of people generally speaking and it's a massive generalization but it is a true generalization 
This is what we are like. We are deceptive. We flatter. We are proud. But the Lord is a saviour. He is the saviour. And I love how he describes the words of the Lord. They're flawless. Like silver purified in a crucible. Like gold refined seven times. It's so valuable. What we're doing right now is amazing. This precious word of God. Isn't it amazing that we can read it, that we can understand it? This is what God is saying. The most valuable thing in all creation. Psalm 13, for the director of music, a psalm of David. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart? How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I'll sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. I love this psalm. It reminds me of children in a car <laughs> on a long journey. What do they say? Are we nearly there yet? I've learnt the best answer to that question is 18 minutes. Whenever they ask it, however long, you've got to <laughs> just say 18 minutes. And the reason why I say that is because when I put the sat-nav on when we were going camping, dreaded camping trip during the summer, the sat-nav uh, froze well, it crashed a little bit. So it was still kind of showing me the way, but the time was stuck on 18 minutes. So they kept on asking and I kept on checking and I kept on faithfully telling me what Satnav told. So uh, I would say 18 minutes and that sh soon uh, shuts them up. But they're not really asking. The children aren't really asking for an exact time what they are doing is venting their frustration that they don't want to be in the car anymore they're saying this is rubbish come on i want to be there how long is it gonna be please can it be soon that's what they're saying it's an expression of frustration and this is the case here with david he is frustrated he is being oppressed and he's saying how long is this gonna happen lord and he cries out for the Lord because his hope is in him. He knows that light and life and love is all from the Lord. And so that's where he puts his hope. That's who he puts his hope in. And he realises without the Lord, he's got nothing. He'll sleep in death. He trusts. And many of these Psalms share this same shape that Psalm 13 has, where it begins with lamentation. And this crying out for help. But then as the psalmist David here puts his trust afresh in the living God of love. Then his heart is lifted and he is content. He is at peace despite everything that might be going on. He praises the Lord and he recognises his goodness to him. So lamentation turned to praise by meditating on the living God. Psalm 14, for the director of music of David. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on the Lord. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, for God is present in the company of the righteous. You evildoers frustrate the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When the Lord restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and be glad. It's no wonder why Simeon and Anna and the shepherds and the wise men were all rejoicing 
when Christ was born. I think it's Simeon who says he can now depart in peace because his own eyes has seen the salvation of the Lord. That's Jesus. God saves by name. God saves by nature. God saves is his very purpose. He is the saviour. Psalm 15, a psalm of David. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbour and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honours those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. I think you can take this on face value and it is a whole load of a, a lot of worth this is how we are to live, but let's not put the cart before the horse. God's word isn't saying live this way in order to be saved, live this way in order to ascend the holy mountain to come into the very presence of God. That's not the good news. The good news is that no one is righteous apart from Jesus. And so we need to read this first and foremost with Jesus in mind, saying who can do this? Who can be perfect enough to enter the presence of God and then verse 2 says the one that's not saying generally speaking the person who does this this is saying the one whose walk is blameless the one who is righteous the one who always speaks truth from their heart and that's not me I pray that by the spirit of God this is me more and more each and every day but I am not this perfection but Jesus is. He is the one who is ascended and who is sat at the right hand of the majesty on high. He is the one who has lived out the Lord's law of love to perfection. He has filled the law full and it's in him and his righteousness that is all of our confidence. He is the one who has kept the oath to his father even when it meant that he would die on the cross and be forsaken. He did not change his mind. He prayed, yet not my will, but your will be done. Isn't Jesus amazing? And where it says, whoever does these things will never be shaken. I'm reminded that Jesus has died once for sin and never to die again. He cannot be shaken. He is immortal. He is indestructible. Now a priest in the order of Melchizedek. You can tell that we've recently read Hebrews, can't you? But you can also extend this as well, because as we put our trust in Jesus, we're united with him and all that he's won, his righteousness, his perfection and dying for sin as we trust in him, he bestows that on us. He gives it as a gift, not earned, but given freely to those who simply would receive this blessing. That's the good news. Jesus and the life that he gives. Psalm 16, a miktam of David. I know that you're probably dying for me to click on this little footnote but it's boring. They have nothing really to say. <laughs> a miktam, they say, is probably a literary, literary or musical term. In other words, they don't know what it means, but that's their best guess. Of David. Ooh, it is of David. Now, David was a king, but if you read the account of his life or the accounts of his life, you see that there are priestly elements to his calling as well. And he is mentioned in 
Peter's sermon at Pentecost that he is a prophet. And clearly he is so. He, re- he wrote many spirit-inspired psalms, songs of praise. And this is one of them. David is speaking by the Holy Spirit of the Messiah who would come because Peter points out in his amazing sermon at Pentecost that David could not be speaking about himself here. He is, it's as if the Spirit takes the words of Jesus and plants them in his mouth to say hundreds of years ahead of time what the Messiah would do speaking of his death and resurrection so let's read this psalm 16 keep me safe my god for in you i take refuge i say to the lord you are my lord apart from you i have no good thing i say of the holy people who are in the land they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight those who run after other gods will suffer more and more I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So again, we want to get the order right. This does apply to David. But it applies to David in the same way that applies to us, that it applies to Jesus first and in him we have this hope. And that's Peter's point at Pentecost, that this could not be referring to David because his body, his tomb, was there in Jerusalem for all to see. But Jesus' tomb was empty. His body was not abandoned to the realm of the dead. It did not see decay, but he is risen in power. So this is of Jesus. And notice how Jesus absolutely loves his people. Sometimes it's said that, or people say things like, oh, I I can get on board with Jesus, but I can't bear his people. I can't bear the church. And you can sympathise a little with it because the church is filled with sinners, people who get it wrong. But Jesus loves the church. He calls them the noble ones in whom is all his delight. And he's talking about this inheritance as well, this image of the promised land, how it is divided up by lot and given to various tribes according to their size. But that idea is taken as Jesus inherits not being physical land but people that is the treasure that is given to him his inheritance given to him in his resurrection and he loves it he is so delighted with his with the lot that he's given um and also finally i'll stop rambling after this notice how psalm 15 ends it says whoever does these things will never be shaken and we we said that clearly this cannot be talking about anyone else other than jesus because he alone is perfect and now that little phrase comes up again in psalm 16 doesn't it psalm uh, psalm 16 verse 8 says i keep my eyes always on the lord with him at my right hand i will not be shaken this is talking about jesus obviously but the promise is ours in jesus because every promise of god is yes and our men in him right enough said maybe psalm 17 a prayer of david hear me lord my plea is just listen to my prayer my cry hear my prayer It does not rise from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from you. May your eyes see what is right. Though you probe my heart, 
though you examine me at night and test me, you will find that I have planned no evil. My mouth has not transgressed. Though people try to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths, my feet have not stumbled. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, you who have saved, you who save by your right hand, those who take refuge in you from their foes. Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings, from the wicked who are out to destroy me, from my mortal enemies who surround me. They close up their callous hearts and their mouths speak with arrogance. They have tracked me down, they now surround me, with eyes alert to throw me to the ground. They are like a lion hungry for prey, like a fierce lion crouching in cover. Rise up, Lord, confront them, bring them down. With your sword, rescue me from the wicked. By your hand, save me from such people, Lord, from those of this world whose reward is in this life. May what you have stored up for the wicked fill their bellies. May their children gorge themselves on it, and may there be leftovers for their little ones. As for me, I will be vindicated and will see your face. When I awake, I'll be satisfied with seeing your likeness. No one has ever seen God. The God who is at the Father's side has made him known. Jesus sees the face of God, and in him the promise is ours as well. I wonder whether this psalm came to mind as Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Satan said, I'll give you all the nations of this world if you just bow down to me. Though people tried to bribe me. I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. You cannot bribe the living God. Right, let's keep going. Psalm 18. For the director of music of David, the servant of the Lord, he sang to the Lord the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, I love you, Lord, my strength. I just think that is brilliant. Have you prayed that recently? Have you felt that recently? I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise. I have been saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his covering, his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, clouds advanced with hailstones and bolts of lightning. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot his arrows and scattered the enemy. With great bolts of lightning he routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed and the foundations of the earth lay bare at your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of breath from your nostrils. 
he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They can they confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept my ways. I have kept the ways of the Lord. I am not guilty of turning from my God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the devious, you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. You, Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your saving help my shield and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. You provide a broad path for my feet so that my ankles do not give way. I pursued my enemies and overtook them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them so that they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for battle. You humbled my adversaries before me. You made my enemies turn their backs in flight and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord! But he did not answer. I beat them as fine as wind-blown dust. I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations. People I did not know now serve me. Foreigners cower before me. As soon as they hear of me, they obey me. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my saviour. He is the God who avenges me, who subsumes who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. I can't help but feel that this is a psalm which encapsulates so much about Jesus' first coming, but there's a lot about this that I think fits best understood when Jesus comes again to judge the wicked and the righteous, reward the righteous. And <clears throat> the main reason why I, I see that it's because of this scary verse. It is solemn and it's serious and we need to understand the implications of it. When this is happening, they cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. O oh, sinner man, where are you going to run to? Now, today is the day of salvation. One day it will be too late. Now you can cry to the Lord and he will hear you as you pray in faith in Jesus' name. 
but one day the time of opportunity will be over. That's why I think this psalm fits best with Christ's return. That's when there will be all the nations gathered praising the Lord. Right, let's keep reading Psalm 19. For the director of music, a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned, in keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Stunning. We'll read one more and then we'll call it a day for today. Psalm 20. For the director of music, a psalm of David. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. King Jesus has such a pure heart that we can entrust him with everything. We can say, Father, please, may Jesus get what he desires, because what he desires is always good. What a blessing, what a prayer. And that's the prayer to pray when we don't know what to ask for. That the Father would grant all the requests of Jesus. Answer his prayers, Lord, as he intercedes for us. Maybe we couldn't top that. Victorious King Jesus, in him is our hope. Thank you for joining me. God bless and see you soon.